just witnessed was just another day in the life of a pro skateboarder. This extreme sport is filled with intense, action-packed moments every time someone steps on a skateboard. The rush of adrenaline and fear and prayer all mixed together is enough to get anyone's blood pumping. Then there's longboarding. This mellow, much less intense form of skateboarding has been an ever-evolving craze that needs to go right back to where it came from, in the garbage. Sure, it might be a fun way to get to class, or if you're just in the mood for free transportation, but in the end, you simply look like a goofball riding around on something as big as a surfboard with weirdly cut designs and a bulky frame. Bottom line, skateboarding is better than longboarding, period. And here's why. After the first week of skateboarding, you begin to notice the effects of this sport. Your calves and quads begin to feel sore. You become exhausted after a short time because skateboarding and performing tricks takes much more cardiovascular strength than you imagined. And your overall endurance begins to improve as well. From a physical standpoint, longboarding offers none of this, which proves skateboarding is a more superior sport. Furthermore, the mere mechanics of skateboarding and longboarding lean towards favoring skateboards. Imagine walking along a sidewalk and having to stop, completely breaking your stride just to get over the little, tiniest of obstacles. This is a, an occurrence that happens all too often with longboards. When the need arises to ollie up a curb or get around an obstacle, skateboards can easily, comfortably get over it. But for longboards... This is uh, basically impossible, so it's necessary to completely stop, pick up your bulky longboard, and then put it back down over the obstacle. This just wasted several seconds of your life that would have been used elsewhere if you were using a skateboard. Lifestyles also play a large role in skateboarding and longboarding. <clears throat> it is almost instantly noticeable whether a person tends to longboard or skateboard. Simply the image they present can determine their style either skateboarding or longboarding. Skateboarders generally have a much more relaxed, comfortable look wearing sponsors t-shirts from brands like Nike, Diamond, or Altamont, while also wearing usually some fresh pair of kicks or a hat or something. Unlike longboarding, skateboarding and image actually mean something. Image sells brands, and brands make money for skateboarders to continue to make a career out of the simple sport we know and love. Longboarders, however, with their iPhones and super extreme skinny jeans, have no excuse for looking like a goofball riding this giant piece of bamboo down the sidewalk. I'm sure most of you have undoubtedly seen this at least once, a hipster wearing his beanie and lensless glasses, cruising down the road thinking he's the coolest thing ever, even though he looks like a kook. Sometimes these boarders need to be reminded that longboarding requires very little to no skill whatsoever and making longboarding videos and putting them on Vimeo so all your hipster friends can see it's not nearly as interesting or challenging as making a skateboarding video like Fully Flared, Baker 3, or even like... The differences between these two vastly divergent forms of entertainment and transportation are plentiful. Even from a monetary standpoint, skateboards are the better option. Let's take a more in-depth look at the economic impact of skateboards and longboards. The basic anatomy of a skateboard consists of the deck, trucks, wheels, and bearings. For a longboard, essentially the same parts are used. However, your average longboard will cost over $200, but a complete skateboard only costs $100? So why are these overpriced longboards, which accomplish the same goal as a skateboard, so popular? One possible explanation includes the social accommodations people make to fit in with society. This means that as more and more people have begun purchasing these longboards, more people have felt the need to follow suit, even though they are getting ripped off, spending of hundreds of extra dollars that is completely unnecessary. As to any explanation beyond that, all I can say is some questions simply can't be answered. And this is certainly one that this has this skateboarder confused. The other aspect of the economic impact on skateboards and longboards is the profit gained from these sports. Skateboarding has an industry that provides sponsorships, other forms of income such as contests, videos, and various promotional stunts. Longboarding offers none of this due to its lack of excitement, limitations as far as tricks and other stunts that can be performed with this with a skateboard. This is yet another reason why skateboarding prevails over longboarding. What once was deemed a pointless, insignificant hobby can now provide an entire career based off of this small 30-inch deck shaped like a band-aid with some trucks and wheels attached to it. 
Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for longboards. This constant debate between longboards and skateboards doesn't seem like it will end anytime soon. The fact that there are so many skateboarders and an equal number of longboarders leads to many different opinions on the two board sports. Therefore, there is no clear definite superior. However, depending on the purpose, someone looking to purchase a skateboard or a longboard cannot truly go wrong either way if they are looking for a relaxing, fun way to traverse the landscape. However, skateboards do offer many more practical uses, such as a lighter board to carry, more functional design to perform tricks, and a greater opportunity to make skateboarding a career. Just look at Tony Hawk, Sean White, or Ryan Sheckler. Do you think it would be possible for any one of these famous athletes to achieve the amount of success they have if they had chosen longboarding over skateboarding? This is reason enough to ditch longboards for skateboards, seeing as there are so many examples of successful athletes that can attest that the majority of their fame and money began with a simple push of a skateboard.